Art is part of the society, it always reflects what happens around it. Painting is a visual language that influences everything. I see abstraction as an imitation of reality. It might teach you how to look if you open your eyes and want to look some more. I was born in Jerusalem, where all my parents and parents' parents were born. I used to like drawing. My margins of my school books had little sketches in them. My grandmother's garden in Jerusalem, that influenced me visually a great deal. There are places that impact you visually in that way. They enter your sensations. I can almost feel them in my hands right now. And so when I'm looking at the painting, often I want that sensation back. In 1951, my father and mother had come to the decision that it was safer to bring their family up in the U.S. I did not want to come. I was 14 and was to high school. I couldn't decide between the sciences. It was my mother who finally said, you always loved art, why don't you study art? I gained tenure at Indiana University and decided that really I wanted to be in New York, but it's hard to just pick up and have no money and come to New York, a city I don't know anybody or anything in. I moved in 76. I continued trying to get a gallery for years. It was total rejection. In this world, People don't see, if you're Palestinian, don't see what you make, they see you. And they don't like us Palestinians. <laughs> slowly, slowly, it just dawned on me that it was worthless to keep struggling because it became emotionally very difficult. I began to have an anxiety attack almost every time I entered the gallery. And they can be very, very rude and very cutting in New York. I became more an activist. We were fighting for the right to return to Palestine, to our homes, for equality, the whole new system. And that really liberated my artwork uh, and liberated me. I became very productive as a painter at the time, and very explorative and experimental. I was able to see the beauty in the world, and that was very energizing, empowering, and created color and optimism in my work. Any time that there is a forward motion in art, it is using the technology of its time. I'd been interested in the com computer for a while. I felt I should try it and find out if I'm really an artist of my time. So I uh, bought an Amiga. I fell in love with the results and was glued to the Amiga for at least two years, combining what we see in reality as we move with what we hear and putting them into abstraction and motion. Those artworks were, in my consideration, some of the most advanced thinking I've done in painting. My friends basically uh, thought it was great fun, so did I. I used to giggle every time I saw one of those Amiga pieces. They are very funny, but in a nice way. I work on two, three, sometimes four or five paintings at the same time. When I enter to get going, then the paintings begin to permeate my consciousness. The paintings do not arise out of feelings. They arise out of thinking. Uh, and, and I'm very scientific in the way I think and plan. But when I do them, it's in, I trust my intuitions fulfilling every whim that comes along. Balancing back and forth between what I intuit is right and what I want to do 
and which one wins is hard to tell. When a thing, painting is going badly, I'm feeling badly, but not because my feeling is in the painting, I'm reacting to frustration. But when it's going well, I'm very happy because I've captured something I've wanted to capture. When you come to the painting, your brain is smarter than your consciousness of things is. So you've seen these things before. You've realized driving, living in the city, that there's a pattern to the way cars move in the city. You're only learning that what you have experienced can become language, can be visual language embodied in this painting. So you like the painting because you recognize in it what is already in you. <laughs> We're never asked to think about what remains in our memory after we walk a street five times, let's say. And so there's something remains in the memory. As I was saying about Palestine, something remains that I, I almost feel it with my hands. I can make it, I put it in a painting, uh, but it's not a photographic image. It's what remains visually in memory. It's something palpable and real. What your iPhone or cell phone is telling you when you take a picture is only a teeny slice of what is in front of it when you take the picture. It's an image of a fragment of time of reality. But a new abstraction can result from a new way of seeing. I'm 82, soon 83. <laughs> I think it's the best stuff I've done. Now people are buying my paintings, so I can afford to keep painting. It's nice that it happened at this stage because I'm less likely to be put off my path than I would have been maybe when I was younger. It was very strange. With all the trying and trying over a period of 30 years, I couldn't get any serious dealer to represent me in this atmosphere. And I think it's me they object to, not my work. My act of resistance against the propaganda and brainwashing of our time is I want it clear and obvious that I'm an Arab and a lover of the Arab world and a Palestinian born in Jerusalem and it's my city. I was thinking before I started selling with Ayam that all of my big paintings are one day going to be taken to the garbage by, you know, whoever cleans out my studio. But now I feel like they won't be, I'm very glad. <laughs>